Okay, can I go geeks first? In five, four, three. Hello. <laughs> You're on, guys. Zero. You are the man. Me? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me be the man. Tonight we are the, we are the, we are uh, doing our TV show, The Comic Book Geeks, and we're interviewing something, some, somebody in relation to comic books, you know, because we do comic book stuff. And you know, there was something about us and comic books. Well, we are crazy about uh, comic, comic books. <laughs> I love love and beauty and what philosophers say But I'm a comic book geek I don't call me a loser Cause I'm a comic book geek well, I'm a comic book geek well, I'm a comic book geek well, I'm a comic book geek I wanna live in a world of adventure I wanna have a season of immortality I want to move across the limits of a magic past the limits I believe that we can be the other limits of human That's why they call me a geek Oh well a comic book geek I love a comic book geek Well I'm a comic book geek Well I'm a comic book geek Okay, now, I want to show you this. This is this man has done this great movie, Independence Day, starring who? Who was the guy, who was the guy who flies into the flying saucer, the guy who plays the drunk? He had his, bro his brother was uh, married to uh, the famous movie star. Kevin Eastman. Good. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's he also Craig Thompson in it. And okay, wait, 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 wait. It's called Independence. I was just trying right. to, that was a vain attempt at humor, actually. <laughs> and the man himself. F.C. Brandt, because you don't know his name. <laughs> so we call him F? F.C. F. C. Brandt. F.C. Brandt. And I got to say, like, never in comic book geek's history will you see the artistry that goes into the lighting of this show than on the top of this man's head. Oh, good God. <laughs> look, look, can we cut to this man's head? FC Brown, over here. Look at that. Look at how much lighting we put into this fucking show. Dude. That's really rude. <laughs> okay, I'm a, a lot of work into it. Okay, on a, on a serious note here. This is, this is called Independence. It's about people who are independent. <laughs> No, that, <laughs> you, you, you say that because you haven't watched it. These are comic. Yes, I have. These are comic. minutes. Yeah. I heard, I oh, heard my God, you, you said you that. You, you heard my critique. Okay, yeah, this is, this is about people who've done comic books and, and what's behind it. And uh, well, we'll let Mr. FC tell you a little bit more about it. And we'll show clips on and off as, as the Unless show goes on. How much have you off. watched? How much of this have I watched? Yes. Well, I was looking for something sexy. And Mike, Mike said that when you ask him, why he got into comic books. He said he did it to get laid. Right. right? But I actually, I, I listened to it and you were asking people about creativity and, and things like that and I was, I was kind of bored with that You part. thought they were too pretentious? So. Yeah, it seemed pretentious. I wanted something sexier. And that's because I'm, like if Jessica I'm, I'm all about sex. Even, even, even though I'm real so. old, I'm all about, you know, sexy dynamic shit. Yeah. You, know? yeah. You, know, you, yeah it's not, you can tell by our show. But go on. But. It's it's more earnest than it is sexy, but okay. It, That's it, okay. Talk about it. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> let me see. I'm wearing my fake glasses, so I can't ask about it. <laughs> it's, it's it's a documentary. I, I interviewed um, <coughs> several independent uh, creators and publishers of of comic books or within the comic book industry, 
and uh, interviewed them about being artists and about the artistry of doing comics and about big names. I was going to say big names, well, to, maybe not to the general population, but to us comic book people, they're really big names and they're really important people. You you maybe mention some of them. No, well, I top of the list. Okay. Or you could read it. Uh, well, Mike classes. Mike Wellman is is in there. Uh, he's he's a famous writer. And, uh, he wants. He's a wannabe uh, famous Kevin writer. Kevin Eastman, but he's, Wendy Peeney. Kevin Eastman is. Uh, he's the guy turtles. who did, did the turtles. Wendy. He fucks Julie Strain every night, dude. <laughs> and Wendy. That's true. That's an interest, he's Wendy an interesting Peeney guy. Wendy Peeney did uh, Elf Quest, which was one and of the. She also posed as uh, Red Sonia. Right, yep. and that was one of the first independent comic books that were it enjoyed some popularity. I would fuck her in, in her Red Sonia guys. Yeah. But not as Wendy Peeney in your movie, dude. No. But, like, I would fuck her in your movie thinking about the Red Sonia Wendy, Wendy Peeney, dude. You know, I saw her husband, is it like Richard Peeney? That's a, yeah. yeah. And he was dancing with some girl, you know. And they, which is also and known as Dick Peeney, <laughs> which I would not know, want to be known as no, Dick she wasn't Peeney, around. dude. She wasn't around, right? And he was dancing, he was dancing his dance, and it was like a crop the dance. Dick Peeney dance? He, he broke his leg. I was, I was watching him do it. <sighs> I it's think also it was like, known as the Dick Peeney. Like cheat on her or something like that. She was like, she was real famous. She's she's, she's a hot woman. She's all, as, well, as Red Sony. She's older now. She's she, much she's older. Probably like now. her fifties. Mike, you're but barely holding. I'm old talking old. about fifteen or twenty years back. Let's get right. back. Let's get back right. to business here. But <laughs> a little bit away from the gossip, which is back really to the fun. business. I'm gonna get my glasses on. I read some of this stuff. So yeah, the, the doing a really crappy job. The documentary structure. Nothing personal. Aw, damn. My lens fell out. Now you got to read, read some of these people. Oh, FC, you could talk to us about some of these people, and then we could comment on it. Is Frank Miller? Is Frank Miller in here? Frank Miller is not in there. Uh, <laughs> neither is Mike McNola. Neither is uh, Stan Lee. You know, I, 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 <laughs> Go Am I going to get a second chance at this? Can I come back to the show? <laughs> this is it. This is on my oh, one come show. on. Work with it, Mike. Come on. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, inten I intentionally land. actually went after people that uh, you don't hear from necessarily in, in, in more other obscure, documentaries. More uh, obscure talents? Not necessarily. Well, yes. Probably more obscure What's the camera? would be, What's the would camera? be a, a good thing. More obscure thing, talents? But Where's my camera? Obscure. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. More obscure talents? <laughs> Obs it's genuine. <laughs> All the same. Ob obscure though uh, isn't, isn't wouldn't meant to be wouldn't meant to uh, imply that that they are any less talented that, than people that, that are well known. Well, Mike's really pretty talented, and he's, yeah. he's a great well, he's Mike a great isn't interview. Who I'm talking about? He's a great interview. But <laughs> did you but yeah, interview I, uh, Rob Liefeld? Like no, uh, Eric Larson was the person from Image that I that I got the a good guy, publisher huh? of Image. Yeah, he's, he's very a, nice he, guy, he, and he really and loves comics. Very personal, he is. That's he actually makes that. If you you hadn't gotten to that point in the documentary, but he actually makes that point that uh, there's pretty much nothing else that that that's very distracting. <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't find your other lens. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> we do this show right quick. Um, I can read this way. <laughs> Well, you know, he started at 15 doing, and, and that's, when you talk about creativity, he would talk about how he would just be drawing the Savage Dragon, his character. Yeah. It's like the only thing he's done. Yeah. And that's... And he, he addresses that in the movie. He, he, in the movie, he, 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 he says that if, if he weren't working with Image um, or publishing comics he'd be professionally, at his house. he'd be at his kitchen table drawing... Still drawing comics just on his kitchen table. I like for that. I like it because when you ask somebody, what would you be doing? It's a genuine if you love. If you weren't a movie star, you weren't this ass. Oh, I'd, I'd probably kill somebody, or I'd be doing some some dramatic bullshit right. like that. You know, they'd just be doing something else. Is what they'd be doing. Right. You know, it's <laughs> and it's real cliche and boring. What most of them have. Can to I say. tell you something, Jeffrey? I wish you'd watch this entire film. I will. Yes. I promise you now that I've met FC <laughs> because uh, now that you. You, you know, know that it's it, not it, like that for the first. No, because the, the first 15 think, minutes think, doesn't define it necessarily. If nothing else, the mere fact that he included me in this project. And I was wishing I had been included too. No, uh, let me just say one you've, thing. You've only I'll made one comic. Here. You've only made one comic, and it failed, <laughs> right? But I made a I, I made a comic, and it failed, but it kept going, dude. Okay, listen. They but you made a comic, and it failed, and you stopped. Shut up, dude. Uh, let me talk. Just let me say something. They interviewed us for a show. It was it was like a. A documentary on on Star Star Wars, uh -huh. 
And I called Mike over because they actually ran into me because they saw my van and it was a bat van and they thought I was kind of a character and everything. And they interviewed us, as, but I called Mike over because I didn't know that much about Star Wars. Oh. And they did the whole interview and it was kind of, they even released it theatrically a little really? bit. Really? And uh, they, my part was really big, and Mike was very jealous about <coughs> this, you know. And and, uh, and he's been stealing the show from you ever since. No, <laughs> but I just I, make him, I've been blazing my own trail, dude. Just, I'm sorry, that was really egotistical. It didn't have anything to do with me. My name is Jeffrey Patterson. I've collected comics for 50 years. I've had a store for 25 years. I got married on TV. We've got our own comic book. I dress up as a superhero constantly. I really try to show my love for comics, and we've got some stuff we want to show you. The shows, you know, we've got a TV show, and we've got a comic book, and, and we want to show you some of the stuff we do. It shows our love of comic books. bet we have the best trained military and my taxes keep it that way. Of course I pay my taxes. My taxes help to win the war on drugs. The taxes I pay go to raising the standard of living in emerging nations. I'm paying to help defeat communism. Islamic fundamentalism must be contained. Our tax dollars help to do that. I pay to help our corporation establish a foothold in new markets. My dad never cheats on his taxes. Stephen King says that, that asking uh, where his ideas come from, that's the worst question he gets, <laughs> you know, where it's like, the uh, because he's like, I, I don't know how to answer that, you know, it's kind of the same thing. I, I just think we're kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, where do the ideas come from? I, you're not serious with that question, where do ideas come from? They come from everywhere. <laughs> There's nowhere they don't come from. What do you mean, where do they come from? There's some sort of nether region, and, and when good ideas come, it is like you're just reaching up and tapping into something else. <laughs> That's not yourself, and it just, that feels great. Yeah, there's a creative spark. And a creative spark helps drive the creative process, obviously, but there comes a point where it requires more than creativity to further. Even if you have a really good nug nugget of an idea one morning when you wake up, you know, lucky you, you still have to build it into something. What do you do with that idea? It's, uh, I mean, people had an idea of someone with powers far beyond those of a mortal man before Superman came about, but it took Siegel and Schuster to really bring that home. Everybody wants to create something, and it might not always be artistic, but, you know, guys that they like to work on cars, you know, they, they like to, uh, they like it that, you know, they could take something that's broken and make it work again. What, what do other people do for recreation? Like, people, like, spend money, they spend $80 a month on cable, or they, like, they spend a lot of money on, like, their, their bike. It's just like anything else. It's just my, my form of recreation happens to, like, also translate into, like, an artistic endeavor. I like to compare comics to heroin, with heroin being probably the more accepted habit. So awesome, so good, not just good, funny. It's very infectious. It gets into your blood, and it won't let go. And it's a monkey on your back. Going back to the heroin analogy, there's a 12-step program for heroin. People will help you get away from that. But if you're addicted to comics, whether it's reading them, collecting them, buying them, drawing them, writing them, whatever it is, there's no way out. It's this iconic, simple language that anybody with, who can see can understand. Comic strips, comic books, graphic novels, it's, it's all comics. Graphic novels are just long comic books. 
it's tough to get some people over that hurdle of a comic book? You want me to read a comic book? Most comics were historically crap. Primarily geared to morons and GIs and kids. The low-grade, inherent aspect of comics is an important part of the engine that makes them run. If we hadn't have done these dirty, funny books, then you couldn't use four-letter letter words in public. See? We moved culture. We really had no idea what we were doing. Absolutely no clue. This is a great way to get my propaganda out there. You have to have a field of endeavor that you're the total king and master of, and you can't worry about other people's interpretations of your world. And then if they like it, well, that's really great. If they don't, well, they just kind of have to fuck themselves. I'm an artist. Look, it's art. Let's get back. Um, Jessica Al Alba? No, Jessica Abel. She was a uh, <laughs> comic called Art Babe, and uh, her not nearly as hot, but La more Perdita. talented. Did you get an interview yeah. the girl that Caesar likes, Dame Dame uh, Darcy? Dame Darcy, no. Oh, she's uh, funny, boy. She's yeah, really funny. <laughs> I uh, I actually uh, had ate a dinner with uh, Dame Darcy at Comic Con several years ago. She's she eat all your food? No, she, 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 she didn't. She she was actually very fixated on talking to one one individual at the table and, Not and you. didn't. Nobody else at the table. I, she there there was conversation between the two of them the entire time. She didn't didn't interact or really uh, uh, recognize that anybody else. Therefore, was there she with is them. not in your movie. No, I didn't know she did comics. Quite frankly, I I, I had no idea what she did. I just thought she did zines or uh, um, does she do comics? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who Who did you, Al Alan Moore. Who but did you feel was your most interesting uh, interview besides e? me? Uh, yeah. I couldn't pick one. Quite frankly, I, that. Probably sounds disingenuous, but it's true that I, I think each each person was extremely uh, interesting. Mike was pretty interesting um, in the fact that he makes a point of saying, "If you're making a movie, no matter how independent it is, well, you can make a really independent movie, but chances are it's gonna look like shit. Like if you just got one guy in a camera that goes around. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was <coughs> that was that was very endearing. How do you movie sell? <laughs> no. No, but who's been your biggest champion since this thing has been completed? Uh, you and Wendy Peeney have both been very Yeah, no, very Wendy was about. awesome at your she's, screen. She, she's she's very, been very uh If you get Wendy Peeney in back in the Red Sonia get-up, I would sleep with her, and then you will be successful. I will uh, I will email her and see if I can't get put that together, and maybe we can well, film what, it. How does she, but she doesn't have a comic book store. How does she uh, promote, help you promote? Well, uh, she has. Well, Mike hasn't Just really helped me promote it either, except for having it oh, in the store. Oh, fuck you, dude! <laughs> we ordered ten or twelve of them. He got me. To, he got me to buy one. That's I true. Called, he did. Can I tell you? I called you, Jeffrey and like, I was like, dude, this guy's like selling out, dude. You gotta get him. I know. I was standing in the store with yeah. you, and, he did. and then he calls me. He's like, I watched it, and like, everybody's pretentious. Even you are pretentious. <laughs> but I didn't get to the part where you said I wanted to do a comic that I could take to a convention and it'd get me laid. Right? But I would have put that at the start. I, I, you know, that's somebody... You've got to grab the audience. That's what... Uh, okay. Yeah, actually, uh, that, was, that was actually a suggestion of other people, but um, I, I, I didn't have a vision for that. I had a, I had a very strict vision for, the, for this documentary, and that is it's not specifically for people that are inter interested in comic books. And I think, I think, broadly speaking, people are interested in art and creativity. Yeah, and definitely. so so that that's kind of what I, I, I lead in with is, is speaking about being an artist and, and and the creative process. Can I tell you, Chris, if uh, you go because, back because and watch my interview, be, every single line I give you is like a lead into that in my interview. I think you're biased, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I. I when I when I conceived of of doing the documentary, I was aware of maybe three other documentaries on comic book, three or four other documentaries on comic what books. What were they? And I, I, comic book chronicles and and a few others. Comic book confidential. Confidential. That was it. Com, 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 <laughs> yeah, comic book confidential. <laughs> <coughs> yes. Um. And and 
uh, although I watched them all the way through and I was interested in watching them all the way through, I could, stepping back from being a, from being <coughs> a comic book devotee, uh, I, I could see to my eyes that anybody that wasn't interested in comic books at all would not get through more than five minutes of these documentaries. Right. They're, they're, they're of no interest to anybody that's not interested in comic books. And although Comic Book Confidential is, is kind of structured to be yay comics, hey, you should check this out, it's, it, it, it doesn't really have that, it doesn't grip the, the person at the beginning that isn't interested in comics at all. So if, if you go in talking about comic books right off the top, you're gonna lose about eighty percent of the audience is gonna say, I don't give a damn about comic but books. But you I want don't you listen, want something listen about comic books. You want something that's gonna be entertaining. Like Well like I thought it was like, I thought the the very first line yeah. is Craig Thompson saying I don't think artists are special, but at the same time I think we are. But if we're special, it might be in the same way that someone who is mentally retarded is special. And I thought I thought that was a good lead in. And Maybe, and yeah. you like oh. you Maybe if Obviously they had to wear a costume or a super suit or something like that. <laughs> and it's not. It's not sexy. It's not sexy. It's not flashy. It's not, hey, hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Right. But that's, that's not my style. And that is essentially what independent comics and independent media is all about. It's doing your own style. Right. So if I, if, if I was kowtowing to that, that, kind of, that kind of marketing persona, that's, that's not what I'm all about. That's not what the documentary is about at all. And, and the, the documentary is actually is is really against that sort of that sort of mentality of of uh, catering to the lowest common denominator. But you know, so, okay, say if you take a class, and and that was kind of one of my complaints about it. I, I really didn't give it a fair chance. I know. You watched like ten minutes of it. Yes, I have admitted to that. Uh, but I okay. Say say you're taking a class. A professor gets up and he talks, and and he mm -hmm. talks. Or you see these shows that there are. Are made to t talk to you about anthropology. Say it's an anthrop, and they they show they show you Mayan temples and they show you this and that, and it's still the same thing. But they're giving you. It's not like <coughs> kowtowing. It's not like, I mean, when when I did my show, like I always get my wife to to pose or, or do something like that. I mean, I feel like I. I mean, she's got huge huge breasts <laughs> That's and everything, great. Like that. and I always try and get a good. I make her bend over, get a good titty shot, shot. But yeah. I still believe in what I'm sh I'm saying. Right. I want to make sure that I, I I get your attention when I deliver the thing. But I but I always think that's important. You know? Well, if I well, could have gotten, they have a wife, dude, with it, big it, tits. It, if, if I could if <laughs> I could have gotten Jessica able to wear a low cut, uh, tight little thing with a push up bra, I would have let in with her. Um, but. That nobody really volunteered that night. I didn't feel and he comfortable. Wasn't, he really wasn't asking directing that. this film towards your fetish. Although actually, what I could have, I mean, <laughs> really l looking back now, now that I think about it, if if I do a second one of these, yeah, I could probably get um, a dominatrix. Maybe, maybe, I'll pull my dick out. Maybe dude, Julie, I could get some footage of Julie. Strange I'll pull or my dick out, dude. Yeah, my dick. In, in who's that, who's gonna want to see that? Jeffrey, probably. <laughs> Let's go right now. I would like to see it. <laughs> you don't talk about it. What you really do? It. I did earlier. No, you did not. You, you did right behind your head. Right. <laughs> Pull my dick out behind your head. I pulled my it cock was, out. It was very disturbing. Oh, you really did? Yes. <laughs> Very yeah, disturbing. I think we ought to got that. That's cool. We did, we did. Oh, it's, it's going to be on the on the show? <laughs> well, it's out. Oh, man, yes, that would be great. <laughs> so, yeah, I, that's that's my time, I, I guess. No, you're not done. You're not done. So, uh, out of all the interviews that you did over mm -hmm. this uh, documentary, who was the most exciting? I knew you were going to do yeah, that. Sorry, yeah. I, I, really. that. And I was thinking that that had been covered. Who was well, the most exciting? I mean, you. Besides me. Everybody's different, baby. Everybody's different. You were special to me. Who gave but, you the most insight into the, uh, the essence of creativity? Well, each artist, each each person, kind of built, built on the next. Besides and me. And everybody would have kind of their diff their different take on on a few <coughs> things. I was surprised by how many people had the same responses to, to questions I would ask but each person would have one or two things where they would have the, a very unique view that, that nobody else had had brought up and it kind of the documentary itself the documentary began as an idea of okay I've done mini comics for 10 years I know a bunch of people he did a really cool comic called, I, called Bainst where he sleeps with three girls in it. <laughs> seriously yeah 
It's, it's an good. Spell, spell it because you're slurring B so much I can't even quite understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I snorted. It? B, it B A I N S T. <laughs> B A I N S T. -I -I -N -S -T. <laughs> oh, really? I'd like to read that. It's but good. I, I, I don't do think like that particular that. issue is, is up online, but I have several of my comics on uh, a website called bioniccomics.com. Okay. If you want to check things out, it's a very good. Curtain. No, I'm glad you you said that too, because the audience now can. But then it'll be printed underneath. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so my my initial thought was, uh, I'm going to take three months and interview my friends and and slap something together that that will be better than documentaries that I I had seen at, at the very first film festival that I went to. Um, you know, two years later, and and after my friends had all. Turn me down. Um, two years later, I, 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 I had this thing. And, uh, but you got better it, it creative continued. talent than your friends. I did, and, and, it, and it built. I mean, the, the names that I got built upon the. You, you slept the, with this girl, uh, if I'm no, not no, mistaken. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, then. let's just say. Maybe in a former life time. Chief here. 900. <laughs> That's a cartoon. You won't see it, dude. It's yeah. a cartoon girl. Yeah. I want to talk about. It was funny. <laughs> it's funny. That was good. Give me fun. Give it back. Okay. Wait. Then we do the respect knuckles. Okay. That was good. I um, get people laid, dude. Wonder Boy. That's one of my secret powers. Um. How did you meet these? So, how did you meet these people? Because you know, like we said, these are really big names. Well, in yeah. It just circle. it kind of it kind of grew, and you you know you you. Balloon. You, uh, the first few people I had were people like Mike and uh, I think Diane. I'll, I'll handle this from now um, on. I was able to get uh, Diana Schutz and um, uh, Scott. Oh, I'm young. Scott, Scott uh, Ali. Al Ali from uh, Dark Horse. And those were probably the two biggest names that I had before I started really asking other people. And so they kind of open doors sometimes too. And they, I think so, just having the name Dark somebody? Horse and, and, and the, their names attached. Dark Horse is uh, great, initially, boy. They, yeah. uh, opened a few doors and then, you know, once you, once you get a few big names attached, uh, you know other people start reading your emails, and and that's what I did. Was we got a minute left? <laughs> sending out. Uh, you don't even know. <clears throat> just sending out emails, and uh, and everybody pretty much said yes. Well, that's uh, great. The, the only people that I weren't the the initial concept was actually to to have um, some film film people that were interested in comic books involved in it as well. And uh, everybody other than Chris Gore actually turned me down. Um, so I mean, okay. they, they're all busy making movies. So right. They don't have time to sit for. Okay, movie. well, just winding this up, I, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed that I, I guess I was saying it was kind of boring and I, I was implying that. And I can't really say that because I didn't listen to it that much. And I, I, I see you really feel passionate. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Passionate about this, you know, and I, I, I want to congratulate you for putting something this, like this together. It's not that easy. Thanks. Well, yeah, check it out, and I, I would be, I'd be interested in your feedback. We'll, we'll have this at Jeffrey's, at Jeffrey's Comics, um, and, and our sister, our sister comic company. What, what's, your, what's the name of that place? Comic Bug. Oh, Comic Bug sold out. So forget about that. No, no, no. We, we, I think we sold out. I tried to get we, you some. But I have one I think copy, but. I'll be bootlegging this, so I'll have lots of copies. And, <laughs> and, uh, so copies and you guys are the first two stores to carry it, or the uh, first two of the first three. So, what, well, don't say that. No, it's a, it's, a, it's an honor. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. And th thanks a lot for being in the interview. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank so you. So they do call much. you FC. They, uh, uh, FC or, or Chris, either way. Oh, or Chris. Uh, FC was actually a suit. The my. Uh, are you single, sir? I am single, ladies. I'm always single. I'm perpetually single. So. Um, you know, if, well, some if, of Chris experience. if you're into, uh, you know, uh, email us at the comic book multiple comic. partners at the same time. Whatever. And you guys can talk about creativity, there. comic books, yeah. and things and like that. Creations. So, and, and it, we want to wind it up, and we want to thank Caesar for being our cameraman. And oh, by the way, yeah, special word to Caesar. He's, Jeff he's, Bergdahl. Single, he's single. Jeff Bergdahl is not single, and he's helping us out also. And a bunch Caesar of, a bunch is like, of ready, ready to lay some. Uh, Do we pipe. have another half a minute? Mike's number one fan. Derek, Derek over there, so he's slapping his head. John Colucci, he, he's ready to stop spending his money on crack. Start See, spending money on the winners. Oh, wait, we got to interview John, dude. We got to interview John. Get John out here. John, 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 John,
Mahalo. We love. Oh, we love comics. We love. We love comics. We use comics. 